I'm here at ElexCon with artist Brian Mark Taylor. Uh, thank you for speaking with me. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'd like to start by asking, is there an artwork here that you're most proud of and why? Well, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to say because each one of my works is kind of like a leaf in um, a journal. So they, it's kind of, they, they kind of talk to each other a little bit. But I, I'd have to say one of the biggest influences that I have, and you could say um, the canyon piece here, can, they call it Canyon Dwellers. Mm -hmm. uh, that painting in particular is of Zion National Park. Okay. Well, inspired by. And uh, as a kid, I was I was just blown away by going down to that Red Rock country and mm -hmm. you know, Zion National Park. And I've seen it. Too. It's very. Uh, it's it's like an alien landscape. Mm -hmm. As much as we can. I mean, it, it probably looks something like it could be on Mars or, or something like that, but it it's, um, I, I come from a landscape background, landscape painting background, okay. and that influences all my science fiction stuff, so I just kind of tweak it a little bit mm -hmm. and to give it that more science fiction flavor to it. Okay, okay, nice. Um, how do you know when a work is finished? Well, part of when I know I know a work is finished when it stops bothering me is one okay. thing, right? Mm -hmm. But it also has to kind of draw you in some sort of focal point. Mm -hmm. Now, with my work, it's very abstract as well as kind of a representational or a believable space, mm -hmm. right? So I balance that line. Um, I kind of walk a tightrope between the two, between mm -hmm. the abstraction and the representation. So. I try and um, let the viewer put as much of it as possible into the piece, mm -hmm. uh, meaning the strokes are very uh, loose and fresh, mm -hmm. and but it has to have just enough detail to make it read, okay. but not too much to destroy that freshness. Oh, okay. So that's the tightrope I'm walking. Okay. So I have, a, I have a large discard pile. Oh, you know, okay. because if it goes past the fresh form, mm -hmm. then it's no longer interesting to me. Oh, okay. And so it goes in the trash. Okay. Uh, so, but I'm willing, you know, I'm willing to take those risks and stuff like that, and to get those those gems. And I think a lot of artists, as well as collectors, have responded to it. Okay. Um, you can see by the sales have been pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Red dot every is sold. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, you kind of talked about this already, but what inspires you um, with your artwork? You say natural settings. And... Yeah, definitely it's the landscape that does. Um, certainly movies have had their influence, um, you know, Star Wars, I mean, Star Wars Generation, stuff like that, but, uh, you know, beyond that kind of uh, influence is, is just going to these uh, places where um, there's a lot of rich, interesting texture. So this year I went to, it was all about communist countries. I was in Cuba oh, okay. and went to China um, and, and really experienced uh, some of the, the rundown areas of, um, you know, in these, mm -hmm. these, these places. And, right. and it's where it's like nature is reclaiming it. Oh, okay. So I'm interested in kind of the idea of a future past. Uh -huh. okay. So these are futuristic, but they all have a patina on them, mm -hmm. meaning they've been around for maybe hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of something that I'm interested in. Almost like the archaeology of imagined worlds. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I see it. Yeah. Um, what, and some of these questions, um, some of them you might just say, I, I, I really don't have an answer. That's fine. But yeah. It's, uh, sure. Uh, what is your most important artist tool? Is there something you can't live without? in your studio. Okay. Well, I would say um, my pinky finger. Oh. And that's kind of maybe surprising, but uh, I've looked for other things to do what my pinky can do in terms of it makes a nice soft edge uh -huh. with the oil paint. And there's really nothing, even though it's not great for my health to oh. put my pinky through it every single day. It, yeah. gets, it gets pretty raw by the end of the day. Oh. And I've kind of built up a little bit of a callus, but mm -hmm. it's really my indispensable tool. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. Um, is there an element of art you enjoy working with most and why? I think the initial expressive stage, mm -hmm. you know, I start with a big brush. I don't do any underdrawing, which is very different from oh, wow. most of the artists that are kind of in this show. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what that's one of the reasons why it stays fresh and kind of, because it's a very intuitive process. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't even know really what it's going to be huh. until it kind of emerges. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's that's really interesting. It surprises you sometimes. I it guess, does. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, how did you start making art, and, and why do you make art? So, as a kid, uh, when I was eight years old, it was I was really captivated by, uh, you know, science fiction and fantasy, um, like the with books, movies. Um, again, Star Wars is probably the central right. part of it, uh -huh. which is kind of obvious for a lot of people. But uh -huh. also, there was a book um, that I loved as a kid called Our Universe. Our Universe. I think yeah, I know that Yeah, and John one. Berkey's painting is on the cover of that. So okay. I love that book. Yeah. And actually, I'd forgotten about it for, you know, many years, maybe 20 years even. Uh -huh. And then something on a post on Facebook reminded me of that mm -hmm. and that connection. And that was one of the catalysts for me to start producing this kind of work. Okay. Again. Oh, wow. Yeah, so for many years, I, you know, I've been fine art. I've done over 100 shows, more traditional work. Okay. Um, you know, my work's in museums mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that, but uh, so this is kind of a relatively new adventure or a resurgence of this art that I was oh. doing back when I was a child. Wow, yeah. I think now, now that you mentioned it, I recall that book. I think I actually have it stored away. You probably do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know that it was cover. A, it was a major book, yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful cover. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, what role does the artist have in society? Well, I think everybody's running around doing, you know, practical things, and the artist is kind of there to say, "Hey, look, look what this our life looks like mm -hmm. right now." Yeah. And to kind of point out the fact that, you know, it's like the goldfish that you know, you're breathing water, and you know, an older goldfish saying that to the younger goldfish, "You're breathing water," and they're like, "What?" You know, kind of point out things that might not uh, be totally apparent. Huh. Um, yeah. You know, see things that people are not seeing. Maybe get a, a perspective of current society. Yeah. I think that's one thing that about science fiction that's really that I love is that it it's it kind of del deals with current issues, mm -hmm. but puts them in a way where you can kind of really see them. Maybe uh, without getting with the political baggage or right. just the, the normalness of day-to-day -day life. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, in that sense, I think that's why, in many ways, the science fiction can show us the future. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's fun to see also like predictions or inventions that were in books years and years ago that actually, you know, like the iPad was in probably half a dozen science fiction books back in the 60s, yeah. right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you mentioned, you talked about this a little bit, but what movies, books, or other artwork in science fiction or fantasy have inspired you? Yeah, I think, you know, as far as, um, you know, we mentioned John Berkey definitely is one of them. Another one would be John Harris, love his work, and okay. um, this kind of painterly stuff that he does. but. Uh, you know, as far as movies go, definitely like The Matrix is hmm. kind of mind-blowing um, in the multi-dimensional realm, but also the abstraction okay. that, that occurs in it. Yeah. Um, but other ones recent, more recent that I've liked um, are uh, prob you know, probably um, like Doctor Strange was very oh, yeah. well done and yeah. like the three dimensional world or the it's almost like a neo cubist world that yeah. they created at one point Yeah, I thought that was something that was quite inspiring mm -hmm. um, and you know of course Blade Runner would be, yeah. would be in there as well Yeah. so anyway those, those are a few things that I would kick around as kind of influences okay um, is there an art piece you'd like to create that you haven't haven't done so yet. And I what would, would it be? Well, I would love to do take one of these, um, you know, a smaller painting idea and really make it like mural size, and so wow. be able to have like 20 layers of space, and so it just shows a huge amount of distance. Yeah. Okay. Grand scale. Kind grand of. scale stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's kind of where my head is right now, thinking about the grand scale stuff. Okay. But I'm waiting. I'm I'm letting this kind of um, develop a little bit before I go into the grand scale thing. 
it's really good. Because I want to make sure I, I know before I'm making that commitment, it's really kind of that the thing that I want to be doing. Okay. You know, in terms of that idea, the okay. genesis of the idea. I follow. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's definitely going to be more of a, a city, a futuristic sort of city, urban environment. I mean, that's I, I kind of have that down, but mm-hmm. exactly how that's going to look, I'm not sure yet. Okay. All right. Um, that's all the questions I have. Is there anything you'd like to add about any of your work? Or No, I think that, that, that covers it, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Please visit chrisalvarez.com for more cool stuff. That's C-R-I-S. A L V A R E Z dot com. Thanks for listening and keep imagining the future.